It's the simplicity of the gospel that staggers the people. They try to make it a great intellectual something or other when it's the simpleness. But God takes the very tool of humility and weakness and simplicity to work His works with. Amen. That's only a tool in God's hand. John the Baptist, his message. Oh, the forerunner of Christ. So simple it went over top the heads of the people. Listen just a minute. I hope I'm not holding you too long. No. You stand around the walls. Look. John, when all the prophets gave witness of the coming of the Messiah, one of them said that the mountains would skip like little rams. The other said the leaves would clap their hands. One said all the low places will be made high and the high places will be made low. Oh, my. What a day! Did you imagine the school of the prophets and the intellectual conception of that? Oh, my. They had everything so classical. But when it happened, out of the wilderness come an old preacher who never had one day of schooling in his life. Probably his grammar was so poor. His father was a priest, but God took him away from him. We had a nice Sunday's lesson. Wouldn't let him be mixed up with them denominations and took him out in the wilderness to train him himself. That's the kind of that's the kind of stay with the word of God. Yeah. Come out of the wilderness about thirty years old. I imagine a black beard hanging out around his face, fuzzy, big old piece of sheepskin wrapped around him, stood in mud up to his knees. Said, "I'm the one that was spoke of by the prophet Isaiah." And some of the denominations come out and said, "Don't take to say in yourself we have this and that. God's able these stones to rise children unto Abraham." Oh my! Why he had thus said the Lord. He had the message God had foretold He was coming. And the reason He came in such simplicity, it went over the top of their heads. When Jesus came, He said, Why would you go out to see an um, intellectual speaker that can be changed from a Methodist to a Baptist and from a Baptist to a Presbyterian, from a Presbyterian to a Pentecostal, a Pentecostal to something else? Did you go out to see a reed shaking with any wind? <laughs> Not John. He said, you go out to see then a um, man that's clothed and... Fine linen, he said, they're king's palaces, that kind of minister. He said, why did you go out to see a prophet? He said, more than a prophet. John was more than a prophet. And look, he'd come the humblest of all of them. But he was more than a prophet. You know what John was? He was a messenger of the covenant. Sure he was. He went beyond a prophet. Prophet's a seer who sees things. John did too, but he was beyond that. He was a messenger of the covenant. He said, yeah, this is he who has said it. I'll send my messenger before thy face. That's who it was. He was the messenger of the covenant. Sure. In his simple way of coming, he just blinded the intellectual. Now, we've got to close pretty soon. About a few more minutes. Got a few things here I want to say. Some scriptures and some notes. How about the widow with a handful of meal? She'd got to her weakness. She probably starved herself to death. She had no meal. She couldn't go nowhere else and borrow any meal. Nobody else had any. But she come to a place, a great believer. Her husband had been a great man of God. And she was a widow with a child. And she had just a handful of meal. But it was enough. That's all she needed. Consecrated in the hands of God. She lived on it for three years and six months. On a handful of meal. She got weak. She went out that morning to pick up two sticks and break them and put them together. See, the two sticks is a cross. Break, she says, I'm going to get two sticks. She never said I'd get an armful. Now, just two sticks. That's it. See the symbol? And your yeah, old ancient way, way a lot of far. Now, I take logs and cross them, burn them right in the middle, and I go camping I, in the mountains at nighttime, keep them freezing. I lay a log this way and a log this way, and in the nighttime, just keep pushing the ends up, and it burns it right up like as you come up. See, right through the cross. I am... Got two sticks. I'm going to bread dress this meal, this little handful of meal, and make a cake for me and my son. We eat it and die. She was really in weakness, wasn't she? She said, and she turned around and started to walk back. All that hot morning. Oh, it had been so long, man, without anything. Everything, no water, people screaming, people dying everywhere. No word of Bari, nothing to do. She was at the end of the road. She was in her weakness. She said, I'm going to dress it for me and my son, and then we'll eat and die. So she turned around. She said, Just a minute! She looked back and that old fuzzy face sticking across the gate down there. Said, go make a little cake for me first and bring it to me. <laughs> Fetch me a little water in your hand, a piece of bread. For thus saith the Lord. Oh, my. That, uh, oh, my. Amen. That little bit she had. See, she consecrated it to God. Amen. That was enough to feed her the rest of the time. Yes. See, 
when she was weak, then she was strong. One had just a vessel with a little oil in it. And she had nothing. Her two sons was going to be sold for bondsmen. She had nothing else she could do with this little vessel of oil. wasn't very much. She was at the end. Elijah said to her, said, what have you got in your house? Said, just a little oil in a vessel. Said, go to your neighbor's bar, plenty of them. Now, look, get ready before it even happens. Amen. Get ready. Amen. David heard that sound in the mulberry bushes. Elisha saw a cloud this size of a hand. So I hear the sound of abundance of rain. If God can only get some empty vessels. Amen. That's right. He said, fill the house full of them. Amen. See what God wants? God's got to have empty vessels. Listen, we've had so much doctrine, so much ecclesiastical nonsense until we're down at the end of the barrel. There's only one thing left. Turn to God and His Word. Amen. If you'll do that, get some empty vessels. Take out all the Methodists out of them, all the Pentecostal out of them, and all the Baptists out of them, and just let them be vessels and set them up in the house. And then take from this vessel and begin to pour. Amen. <laughs> just begin to pour. She had enough to take care of her and her kids and everything else and pay off all the debts. Why? Why? Just what little she had consecrated to God and following the word of this prophet, she come out right. God sent us a prophet that will take the word of God. That will not take some, uh, something else, but just get empty vessels. If God can just get empty vessels and then take the word of God and pour it into the person. Not some say, oh, I shook when I received it. I spoke in tongues when I received it. I danced in the Spirit. Forget it. Amen. Forget it. Just stay there until it comes. That's all. Until the vessel's full. That's it. That's what you do. Yes, sir. The simplicity of it. The vessels was filled up. How we could stay on that. It was the disciples all flustrated one day. Jesus said to him, said these 5,000 people here, and said, they're fainting. They're starving. Oh, I could stay on that another hour. Amen. 5,000 starving. There's a hundred billion starving. Yeah. Said, send them away. Said, there's no need to do that. Said, you feed them. Oh my, I can imagine mustering up <laughs> everything they could find. And you know, when they got all everything mustered up, excuse the expression, mustered up, but they got everything. They said, now here, we went through the whole camp. We got a penny of money. So we can't have the campaign. <laughs> so we got everything here, but the only thing we can find is just Five little biscuits and uh, two little fishes from a little runny like David come out of the wilderness down here. That's all we got. That's all we can get. We're at our wits end. We can't do nothing else, John. Peter said, that's all we can do. That's all we can do. We're at our wits end. That's the only thing in the line of food that we got. Well, I can just take one little scripture. <laughs> Acts 2.38. And that's all we need. Amen. Just obey that. You don't have to learn seminaries all about this other. Just take that. Amen. Just, just take that. That's all you need. Repent, every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall be filled up with the oil. <laughs> just empty up. Get ready for that one. That's all you need. Just put a drop in it and watch it fill. You know, it wasn't hardly enough in that vessel to make a drop in each one. Maybe tuck his finger like this just dropped it off in each one. Okay. Look back and it was full. <laughs> just dropped it off. See? That's all you need because it was blessed oil. Don't take some seminary experience. Take the Word of God and drop it in there. See how it feels. He said, well, what kind of a drop must we make? Maybe we can take something out of the Psalms. You take what I told you. Repent! Amen. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall be filled from that drop. <laughs> Just drop that in there and you shall be filled from that drop. That's a drop that Peter used on the day of Pentecost. That's a drop that Paul used. That's a drop that all the disciples used. The rest of it will be added. You just take that drop and follow that through. Amen. And the rest of it will be all right. Get weak, get empty. Empty all up and from that on, it'll keep dropping. God will do the rest of the drop. And you just do that. You drop to your knees and receive that with all your heart. Drop in your heart right now and say, God, I believe it with all my heart. God will take care of the rest of the drops. It'll be filled up. You shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now... They had five little biscuits and two fish. So what was he going to do? So they come up and said, this is all we can muster up. We're at the end of our wits. We can't find another piece of bread nowhere. There's nobody. And this little boy probably playing, playing truant went to school this morning. Missed school and went fishing down here. And we picked him up down here on the creek. He'd come to listen. And there he's got five. Thank God for that little boy. <laughs> yes, sir. Said, the only thing we got in the line of life is this little bitty drop here. Said, Jesus said, that's enough. Bring it here. <laughs> Bring it here. Let me have it. Let me have that little drop. I'll take care of the rest of it. <laughs> now, you just keep delivering as I give you from this drop. 
Now, each one of you take the drop of Acts 2.38 this morning in your heart. And just take from there and watch him begin to break the bread of life to you. You repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then see if the Holy Ghost doesn't drop in. Keep dropping on this and dropping on that. Dropping here and dropping there and dropping there. And there will be a filling of the Holy Ghost. That's right. You don't have to go to seminaries. You don't have to be smart. The only thing you have to do is recognize you know nothing. Amen. Let God have a hold of you. He'll take care of the rest of it. All right. Then the voice said, bring them here. That's what God wants this morning. Bring him a bunch of empty vessels. He'll take care of the rest of it. Yes, sir. 